Welcome back to the Hard West. We are looking at scenario number five, which is called As Good as Dead. And today we're going to follow Warren, the main character, as his rootless but happy times of drifting are violently interrupted when he crosses the wrong man, which is the devil in this case. We're going to play with hard difficulty, combat injuries, and Iron Man. Let's start the scenario. You lost everything became an outlaw on the run, but you still had Florence, the love of your life. You were drifting through settlements, evading the law, gambling. You did well enough, but whenever you won, someone had to lose. And if there was something the masked man truly would not stand, it was losing. Then, out of thin air, a gentleman appeared, offering to resolve your predicament in return for your soul. Unaware of the gravity of your situation, you told him to go to hell, just as they surrounded the saloon. Okay, perfect uh, opportunity to start. Every way out was barred or blocked. Enemies positioned themselves outside the windows. You were as good as dead. Well, they certainly have the better position. We could flip over a couple of tables. We could run behind, uh, behind but all of this here is like open terrain. We can't move upstairs because uh, these guys are blocking it, which means, and we can't go into the back room, which means fuck it, uh, this is going to be a solid shootout. Yeah, we're not going to just flip over tables, that's half cover. And you can kiss my, uh, my western ass if you think that I'm going down in a half cover table. It's not going to happen. Instead, we're moving back behind cover. Got you, honey, is what, she, uh, what he said. And apparently since the first uh, scenario, he has lost all of his special abilities. What a prick. I was giving him such a great amount of abilities, but yet he... Yeah, simply hasn't used it. Wow, we're truly fucked. This is a very, very bad position. And Florence has probably the smallest revolver in the in the history of this game. Well, she might as well come a bit closer because she has zero percent chance to hit. Let's go, baby. Okay, at least we got someone in the open. That's a target whom we can shoot. Time to die. Take as many of them with you as you can. Well, wait a second. We're not dead yet. Hold your horses there. I wish Florence had, would have a better weapon, like this really, really bad weapon is not helping us at all. Yeah, he's in full cover, defense, and character's aim is too low to do anything. If we could get rid of one of these guys to the side, we could go into the upper floor and actually do something decent. Leading out on the floor, helpless. 
us to protect Florence. You felt your life ebbing away. I'm pretty sure that this scenario is designed to work out this way. Yeah, the guy here has a gun that hits for five into half cover. There's only half cover available. You gave your last breath. But on that breath, you pledged to him. You gave your soul for a shot at revenge. Trapped betwixt life and death, you now belonged to neither realm. The coffin nails didn't hold fast. You were supposed to be dead, so no one took notice right away. You considered raising the alarm to bring in more enemies just to satisfy your bloodlust. That's the story of Warren, a guy who completely and utterly screwed it. Well, you know what? Let's not go upstairs. Let's instead use the good old shotgun to start this off. of thugs. We're in full cover. Reload. Sail the shotgun because we are dealing we're killing one and dealing damage to the other one. And with nightmare regeneration, as long as we're not getting flanked, we should be fine. So I'm watching this uh, thug over here. This here is a display of how strong Nightmare Regeneration is. And we're constantly getting, uh, getting luck back. So moving out of uh, line of sight, reloading. Healing back up, catching one of these guys outside. There we go.
So what's our optional mission here? Send a test scroll over the telegraph to summon more enemies. Where's the telegraph? Oh, back there. All right, deal. Okay, time for a distress call. Reloading to get the six shooter full again, and here we go. You telegraphed the enemy to send more math. You weren't done dispensing justice. Nice. Come on. Wait a second, uh, I misclicked this one. I saw one person here. That's actually not super clever to move to here because we could be flanked. There we go. Luckily this guy needed to reload. Okay, we are being flanked from multiple sides. regeneration heals us up to full like this the established buff with the luck and the nightmare regeneration is really strong go one more down I think these are the reinforcements yep pretty sure that these are the reinforcements unfortunately for them they decide to stand in the open which they soon are going to be uh, going to regret Let's kill this guy here first. As long as we're not being flanked from the side, we should be fine. Yeah, we need to switch positions soon.
Okay, there is one more opponent here, but I do have 100 luck, so I feel confident staying in this position. Good, and now we know the only two alive are the ones on the, the other side. Moving to here, just to make sure that we cannot be flanked. surely drain his luck and we're going to yeah, get him soon he has a musket that's why he's dealing two damage at full cover regeneration is higher than his actual shots. Plus we can just continue to drain his luck. have the revenge of the masked man but first you need to know the depth of your anger and i thought warren would be kind of a nice guy i i don't even know in this game if there is one of the characters that i could relate to i mean warren looked like a cracked addict in the first uh in the very first uh, series his father was uh, completely doing the wrong decisions just taking this amulet of uh, the devil and getting the whole family into trouble. Like, that already was a fucked up uh, uh, scenario. Then we got introduced to Solomon uh, de Mer, this mad professor, which I thought uh, during the time when we played him was actually a nice guy. But it turned out that he was a pretty ruthless um, uh, asshole, building up a, cult a, cult a cultist clan afterwards, which led us to Grand Vizier Cervantes, who was like the absolute douchebag, uh, king of douchery, um, killing everyone in its way and then leading us to Cassandra who I thought was a nice girl at the beginning but then she turned out to be like a selfish assassin who just wanted to get rid of her curse the stranger somehow stopped you halfway to death after that fateful night the news spread quickly masked man your nemesis went into hiding the stranger approached you again he said he knew the masked man's location, but that telling you would spoil the sportsmanship of the hunt. You didn't pay uh, it much mind. You knew that if you took enough money from him, he'd find you. The stranger made an ominous request. He said that if you took 100 lives, he would reward you handsomely. Okay. So we're now definitely working for the devil. The stranger asked if uh, you met any of your en enemy's enemies. 
uh, said he'd heard a, um, a tell of an old man named Burry. Seemed he ran the gin mill and had crossed the masked man somehow. Tracking him down might put you closer to your target. Good. So kill 100 people for an infernal reward. Go to the gin mill and talk to Murray about the masked man and ravage uh, 65,000 worth of masked man's property. First and foremost, we're going to need guns. Good guns and not shitty guns. So... The revolver rifle is fine because it gives us the option to shoot twice. For now the six shooter is also okay. Yeah, but I think we're going to be better off with another weapon. Well, we don't have fun, so never mind. Going to the Elixir Trader. We could get at least a healing elixir. The natives lived in a small, infertile area and had been given to the occupying forest. They were accustomed to trading with preferences so much uh, not pale as you. You can give them a bottle of liquor. Well, their inventory doesn't look really, uh, really great. Matter of fact, they only have really bad items. And since we don't have any pair of boots, we might as well take the boots 4 plus 5 aim. Good enough. Let's get the liquor. I'm still not seeing how we can kill 100 people, but maybe that's what's going to happen during uh, during the playthrough. You set a few hours drinking and smoking with the natives around mid uh, midnight. They uh, the real story began to unwind. You heard to tell a sinister deity living in the forest and the totem representing uh, it was not far. The natives uh, lived in a small room. Uh, well, where is that infamous deity? Oh, there's the Indian totem. Beneath the totem lay a hoard of gold, precious stones and jewelry screaming uh, eagle carved into the totem spoke, tossed by a spiteful deity. It whispered that it wanted one of your companions and it would reward you greatly. You try to steal the valuables. You pocketed your blood money and the eagle suddenly attacked, damaging you severely. We just got our first, um, our first wound, which is perfect. Makes us just more badass. Minus one hit point and a couple of um, movement points less. Nothing that should scare us away. Oh, nice. We got Shriek as an ability. That's actually pretty good. Plus five aim, and let's use the revolver. Gosh, his equipment sucks, but he certainly has a strong companion in the devil. We 
you came across a mass grave labeled um, uh, with the famous detective company's mark. Many of the agents who have been perished in the field lay here. You dug it up. You found valuables, but your karma felt like it's been out three days in a bedroom. Warren's luck changed. Well, it's okay. Warren has never given a fuck, apparently, so I might all, um, I might start playing him like an asshole. Look at that, a hidden fate trader. The fate trader has all of the relics, which means he might be able to sell us a decent gun. Um, we're looking at Cannon Cavera. Yes, one of the best weapons in the game. Perfect. Um, and whilst we're at it... I think I'll just take the Doomsday Watch. Nope, too much uh, value. We'll come back to the Dooms uh, for the Doomsday Watch. I mean, the weapon was much better than the six shooter, just flat out two damage better. Perfect. Let's go, baby. Let's go. You arrive at Old Man Murray's gin mill to find the place ruined, deserted, and covered in crates. The upper floor of the office remained uh, suspended, but looked like it would fall apart any second. You figured you could grab one on. Uh, you could grab one thing and get out here, but should you get the money from the safe uh, or the curious glass item in the desk? Hmm, good question. We're taking the glass item. You grab the item from the desk. Uh, uh, from the desk. The floor lured a low rumble and heralded the office immediate demise. Uh, you leaped from the room as it collapsed into a rubble on the floor below. You inspected the loot. Turned out to be a strange old monocle. The natives knew about an old man, but no Murray. They said they can only, uh, the only white folk around presented was the masked man's thugs who poached from the nearby forest. The natives lived in a small infertile area. They had been given to them by the occupying uh, forces. Uh, they were accustomed to trading with pale faces, though most of them were as pale as you. Let's see if we can give them another um, if they, we can give them another liquor and get some more constructive information. Okay, so we're sitting down. The natives told the tale of an old hermit who lived by a secluded hut. Word was he found the treasure of incredible value, but fearing the envy of others, he kept it for himself and was thus unable to enjoy his own riches. And okay, I get the gist. We need to drink a lot of whiskey. Let's buy two bottles for now. Another campfire told your man who took a nap at the shadow of the small tree. The small tree of the Zeb kept him snoozing for weeks until the tree grew around him, burying him inside. Some nights when the wind blew um, cold and there was no moon, they said you can hear him wailing beneath the bark. Well, that's almost ridiculous. So, 
The hut was filled with valuable items, gold and gems, Silent Joe. The remnant was clearly off his rocker but had an eye for quality goods. He asked if you could spare anything. Well, you shoot the man and looted his hut, filled the hoarder, you were doing him a favor. That's how it's done. You took um, what you judge to be a fair amount of valuables. This was the tree the natives have been talking about. If you had the right tools, you would cut it down. Let's talk about the right tools for a second. Do we have the right tools here? This here is a gun shop, so probably it's not selling uh, the right tools. I might be wrong though. But it has information to the um, to the Murray's Gin Mail. The old gunsmith explained that it was one thing that bothered the masked man. It was losing his money. He started getting suspicious. Murray was skimming money, and when the masked man got suspicious, he didn't waste time wondering what to do. So we still need uh, tools to cut down the tree. But we haven't found them yet. Let's go to the Porching grounds. The forest in the Indian country teemed with the game more than uh, the natives could ever catch, let alone eat, which made them easy pickings for poachers. The ground was uh, riddled with their traps. On a lucky day, you could disarm them and steal the bait. On a bad day, you can catch a broken finger. Um, maybe it would be simpler just to uh, st uh, stake out the traps and wait for the poachers to show. Nothing like stealing from a thief. Well, let's wait for them. Finally, the poachers showed you took them uh, out like a clockwork, except for one. At the first, refused to talk, but then a creative, uh, a creative pain mismanagement <laughs> took care of that. Once you uh, knew he was serious, he told you the old man Moore was alive, but he had been captured. He said the masked man had left him with the rednecks living near the ranch, uh, Rancho Rojo, then paused for the effect. Seeing your puzzled face, Porcher added solemnly, they eat people. Old man Murray was taken to Cannibal Farm. If you could save him, maybe that tough old bird could prove to be useful. And even if you failed, you'd still put a dent in the masked man's business. As you travel down the Lonestone Road, a trail of smoking runes in your wake, an old man stepped onto the road ahead. He knew you were going after the masked man. He said that the masked man had taken something he was after. He didn't, uh, he didn't approve of your methods, but he appreciated the effectiveness. He wanted to join you. So we got Brandon Scott. And Brendan Scott just joined us, which makes us already two. I'd say Brendan Scott is hopefully not an essential character. No, he isn't. He has five hit points. He has a couple of guns. And a lot of luck. He actually has the minus one hit point, 35 hit point, uh, 35 luck trinket. Which means we might want to buy some more healing items and then actually go to the farm.
You ask Baker about the cannibal farm. The shopkeeper revealed that the man-eaters sometimes came uh, to him looking for meat tenderizers and exotic herbs. If you wanted, he could uh, send a letter of introduction telling you were one of them. Um, you agreed. Um, well, in his, uh, every favor is a prize. He only would help you if you tried his new potion. Okay, go ahead. His new potion clearly stinks. So we have a strategic advantage, but we are losing. Oh, we're at max, min, minus two maximum hit points. Well, let's hope that poison uh, counts as an injury. So that this would actually give us more hit point, uh, more benefits in the end. So going into the cannibal farm. The farm looked innocent enough, but you knew better than to trust the appearances. The cannibals had heavy sentries at the entrance, and uh, hadn't you seen a trace of Murray yet, chances are they had him locked away somewhere. This is where we're going to stop today's session, and we're going to return next session with the attack on the cannibal farm. Um, I already am impressed how much this guy is actually fucking everything up. It's unbelievable. Anyways, um, if you like what you've seen, uh, leave a comment down below and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much and see you in the next session.